this week, I want to talk about meters. And I, I know it sounds very generic, but I, I have this like, and like, this is something that I feel like a lot of people talk about, but I don't know if they talk about it the way I talk about it because what I'm specifically talking about is I have a weird like theory slash like mindset about how things work in life. Um, when it, and when it comes to meters, so I'll give you an example because it sounds super vague. Sorry, did you say eerie? Theory. Sorry, eerie. No. Um, I have a theory. Oh, you have about a theory. It. Yes. Like a game theory. Yes. Oh, so you like said a... you have an eerie mindset. I'm like, like no, the no, world's no, end or what? I have a good old Matt Pat in my brain that comes up with theories. Right. Okay. Gotcha. So, so meter theory. Uh, how do I explain this? It's like, um. If you think about something long enough, you will you there you will do it. If that makes sense, um, kind of in a way. So it's like there's it's like there's a meter that fills up every time you think about something, and when once that meter fills up, you like take an action. Um, and so the reason oh. I bring this up is because I have a weird thing when it comes to people recommending things to me, where. I'm resistant right away when people recommend me do something, but then the more they tell me to do it, eventually I do it. Um, cause recently you've been telling me to play hell divers, which is kind of like why I started thinking about this. Cause it's in my brain and I, I, I've thought about those other things, but in my brain, I'm like, okay, he has mentioned hell divers to me like so this many times and I can feel every single time you recommend it to me, the meter in my brain is filling up. And once it fills up, I'm going to play it. Like oh. it's, or I'm going to do something about it, right. To, uh, take an action on that thing. So it's very interesting, right? Cause usually it takes like three or four recommendations from different people for me to like, watch a show or for me to play a game or whatever it is. And, you know, I feel like, you know, you could go into so many different things with this, but I also think it applies to other stuff, but man, what, what do you think about, what do you, what do you think about that? So I actually have some stats because that's my job is oh, straight snap. up to just Wait, do you have, stats. You have like actual like statistics about what I'm talking about. Kind of. Uh, mostly what you're referencing ties into uh, how most people run ads, advertisements yes. and stuff. I, I was going to bring ads up. Yeah, it takes it takes because, you know, I've been researching how to do a business for such a long time. At this point, I've figured out all kinds of different strategies and thoughts and ways that it works and all that good stuff. But yeah. from that, what kind, um, of, what kind of knowledge have you gained? Do you have any hard numbers to present? Uh, sort of. It takes a uh, human brain about seven times to see something before it starts making a real lasting impression. You have to experience mm. something seven times. It's kind of going back to between seven to nine times is how many times you have to do an action before it starts to become a habit. Oh, it's that similar thing is the more times you experience something, the more times your brain will tell you that's a good thing to experience or to our bodies. Interesting. It's interesting because human nature, we seek, we're very, we're curious people or we're also on the entire other end of the spectrum. Of very familiar people we like what's familiar to us our body craves something familiar and safe yeah. so i think that's where you end up when you see something new you get that initial rejection of what yeah. you're seeing but then we're also a curious mind so we like trying new things we like exploring those new things it's just the more times you experience something new and it becomes less and less new the more and more familiar you are with it the easier it is to try it yeah, I, dude, I think you're absolutely right on that. But I do have to say that when it comes to seeing new things for me, like when people recommend stuff to me, it's not that I am like not, I don't want new things. Because like some people are resistant to like, I just want to stick with what I know, right? I, and I know I know people like that, but I'm actually, I, I love trying new things. I love- Yes, yeah, stick to the status but quo. The thing that's I, I resist, which is, is I, I acknowledge it's it's a- personality flaw or just a trait that can be annoying sometimes um is you know i grew up 
with all of my older siblings and everyone around me having done everything before me, everyone already knowing everything. And so I, I, I think I just have this knee jerk reaction when people are trying to introduce me to things. I, I prefer to find them on my own and learn huh. about them on my own because I've had that like little kid inside me who like wants to do it first, you know? Um, and that's something I, I, I'm trying to like work on, but it's also just like part of me. Um, so yeah, that, that part is a little weird. Uh, cause I, I do like trying new things. So I I'm resistant, but then it's like, I have to like push through that. And then when I actually try it, it's good. But yeah, sometimes when I, when I, when people throw stuff on me and I try it right away, it like is, it can actually make me not like it. Like, so it's oh, weird. I, I have to like ease into it like a hot tub instead of like throwing like if I'm a frog and there's a boiling pot of water, you can't just throw me in or I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to enjoy it, you know? Um, yeah. So I, I feel like I'm, I'm a little strange like that, but I, I'm sure there's other people out there that are like that too. Um, but, but back to meters. Um, yeah, I think I was going to mention ads. Cause like, honestly, there have been ads for certain games, certain YouTube videos that pop up on my recommended a certain amount of times. And after that, 10th or so time i'm like you know what yeah let's let's check it out you know um mm -hmm. it's crazy how that works um but i feel like meters can apply to other parts of your life and not to get too personal but like um i think like emotions is definitely something people can get behind where it's like you know if something get, it like gets too much people have like they, they snap or they have mental breakdowns or it's like once something fills up enough you you cry or you you get mad or you people need to decompress or whatever because they had like your stress builds up or something you know um like it's uh -huh. like in my brain i can just see them all as meters in video games um yeah and i just i just feel like you can kind of look at everything as a meter where it fills up and then when it when it when it you know can, like fills up all the way whatever you want to call that like when the meter is completely full like that's when something happens that's when a shift or a change happens um huh. so yeah, I just thought it was interesting. I, I was thinking about that the other day, and I'm like, I don't know if this is a good thing, because I'm, I'm a visual person, so I, I like having these kind of analogies and things to help me understand life better. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, meters, are they're cool. <laughs> meters. <laughs> I, I can't like say EXP, I have a ton bro. of experience. Leveling up. It's all meters. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut I guess... Off. It, no, you're good. I, I have, I totally get what you're saying. It actually has led me, I, I don't know why, this isn't entirely related, but it's on the same general thing. You mentioned um, having a hard time with uh, like someone recommending something to you. Yeah. And it could really ruin the experience. I'm curious what about that would make you ruin the experience? Because I know for me, I've tried a couple things. I've played it with people, and I've had that exact same experience that you were talking about, where that person just like knows everything, and they like have experienced. Usually, it's in games. They've already experienced the entirety of the game before I've even started, you know. And so they're like right. plowing through early levels, getting all the gear, and and I'm still trying to learn how to shoot right, you know. Right. Um, that can be a really big turnoff, but I'm curious as to why it's a big turnoff. Because I'm sure you've experienced a similar thing. Yeah. Well, and it's been it's been interesting, right? Because my my brother he is a big gamer, and it's part of the reason why I'm such a big gamer. But it's it's been hard, and you know he's not it, it's he's definitely not the only example, but he's you know such like we grew up together, and we've we spend so much time together that like sometimes it's hard to. Uh, keep this from happening so we've you know we've had to express how we feel about games because he he will just plow through games games will come out and he will complete them within the week uh sometimes within the day or two depending on if it's a big game or not and you know i am i have this work-life balance that is important to me so it's like you know friends family all that stuff and games and i'm trying to do it all so it's usually usually when i by the time i get to games that he's already played it's been it's been a bit you know and so uh -huh. it's like uh sorry it's like i went on this whole explanation thing and i kind of forgot what you 
what you even asked in the first place? Uh, just the concept of having to like experience a game for the first time. Yeah. And yeah. what what would drive that away from what you were wanting to? Why you enjoyed playing games in the first place, or why you don't want to try certain yeah, things? Yeah. Well, so I mean, it all, to me, it all comes down to what do you get out of games, and why do you play them? Like, what where does mm. enjoyment come from? Because it can come from multiple things, right? Like, you know, I can play a fighting game. And it doesn't matter if the person I'm fighting knows more than me about the game. You know, it's like to me, like games like that doesn't really matter too much. But if you're playing a game for a story or if you're playing a game to kind of like if the learning experience and the the mystery of the game and the world, if that is something that drives you to play it, that is something that can be ruined very much if someone else walks you through it or if someone else. Like if you watch someone play it before you do, or if, you know, they're backseating you, or if you're playing co-op, but they already know everything. It's like, uh, you know, you know, like when you play Breath of the Wild or any other open world game for the first time, like it could have been back when like Oblivion or even Diablo 2, you know, it's like these games, when you hop in for the first time, you don't know anything about the game. To me, there's a magic to not knowing just how big it is and just how much there is to do. Like. My imag I, my imagination goes wild with like where and how far the possibilities can go that I just get so excited because I'm like, how big is this world? How big is the map? Like when I played Elden Ring and I warped across the map, everyone talks about this, right? It's like you, you that that part where you warp across the map and you zoom out and you can see just how big the world actually is because it doesn't let you zoom out in the beginning. So like the more you recover, uh, the bigger it gets. And that just that mysticism and that mystery of like, how, just how far is this going to go? You know, uh, that is yeah. something that has to be experienced without knowing. Right. But if you're playing games just for the mechanics, if you're playing games just for, you know, uh, the experience of playing with someone else or whatever it is, like that stuff might not be as important. Um, but for me, discovery and exploration is one of the main reasons why I enjoy playing games. Um, but I also do enjoy okay. mechanics and, you know, m like ma mastering hard tech skill and all that stuff. I enjoy that as well. But to me, I, I you know, if I'm going to play a single player game, I want it to be a big world where I don't know anything. Um, okay. Yeah. So does that, I, does that make sense? No, that answers that question. I think uh, on a big uh, part, you know, there's little things too. It, it like, it, it's all a big hodgepodge stew in my brain, you know. Hmm. That's a big part of it. Interesting. So, what's a meter that's filled up <laughs> recently for you? A meter that filled evil. Uh, I had to pee a lot at work today. That's kind of a meter that fills up for everybody, you know. Um, <laughs> but like, let's think of a different one. Um, that's a meter that fills up every day. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know like, if that counts. That's a literal meter that we we all fill up on a daily basis. Is um, it? I, I wish I could unregister that in my brain, but yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Your stomach is a meter that you need to fill with food. You can survive. Um okay, yeah, let's let's get away from the 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 organic meters. Um so what's a product or something like that that you're like you've because you, you mentioned hell divers i'm interested if there's another one um let's see dragon's dogma 2 i've been into that lately and that was kind of a meter situation where um my brother told me that it was a thing it was coming out right like this game is announced and it looks good and i didn't watch the trailer right because i'm trying to stay blind and then my brother, because of this, got into the first game, which came out a long time ago for the 360. It was or, or it was in that era of gaming, and he got into that. And then one of my one of my friends got into it as well, and they they would talk to me about how cool it was. And then I watched some YouTube videos on Dragon's Dogma One, and people were talking about how cool it is. And I'm like, man, okay, this game looks really cool. And I was thinking about getting into it, but then you know I forgot. And then later on, I find out that the second one's coming out in a month, and I'm like this meter is almost full and it's about to get pushed over the edge. As soon as the sequel comes out, I'm just going to get the sequel. And that's exactly what I did. Um, so 
that kind of worked out perfectly because it's like it's almost like because I'm aware of this, I can like plan around it and feel it out way more yeah. than I used to be able to. Instead of it just being like the new Mario game comes out on my birthday and I gotta play it, and you're in GameStop and you're playing on the little, you know, kiosk while your mom checks the game out because you just can't wait to you play the demo while she's buying the game because you just have to play it right now. You know, it's like I, I find myself. I don't have that urge nearly as much anymore as an adult, but hmm. um, sometimes I do, though. <laughs> okay, sometimes wait. On that note, though, is you mentioned that it's something that you've been like kind of enticed into coming to. What's something? Because like for me, the very first time, some I only had to hear about Hell Divers once. I heard about it one time and decided that's it. I gotta, I gotta get it. I gotta play. And there are t- there are games that I do see of that variety. That's like the second I see it, the second I like get a grasp for what it is, I am instantly like, I must be a part of this. <laughs> I must be there. Um, because I mean that actually happened to me with Hell Divers, but not in the same, not on the same level. Because for me, I saw it and was like, this game looks amazing. I'm going to play this game at some point but it is not one of my top priorities. Does that make sense? So like, I think that's the mm. difference is you, the first two were the same for you, but you were like, this is something I need to play now. And I am very interested in getting into it right away. Um, yeah. Whereas for me, I'm like, I'm just going to put this in my backlog and I'm going to play it with my friends whenever we can all afford it, whenever we can all run it on our PCs, when the time feels right. But for me, there's no rush. Um, interesting, interesting. And then, you know, I also didn't know that the game is kind of on a time frame. I know it's like technically not a real time frame, but it is, you know, like was. Oh, well, like I have news. Oh, OK. Yeah. L- l- <laughs> let us hear it <laughs> for all of you that heard our Helldivers video. Uh, yeah. Helldivers. Spo- Actually, I don't know <laughs> if I can Helldive spoiler because it like. Yeah, it's going to be it will never news, happen I guess, again. by the time yeah. this comes yeah. out. <laughs> By the time this is but up. update but, for all of you Helldiver listeners from the last Helldivers video, but burr, 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 burr. how many people do you think listen to the Helldivers news that haven't played it? Probably, I don't know. There's probably somebody out there. I mean, I'm one I of them. Know. Kinda. That's a good question. I haven't played it. Yeah. Well, so this is interesting. I had a thought and then it left. I oh, just like went back. in, went straight out. Go to the hook. I'll episode. catch it. Grab a hook and hook it in. Grab a hook, hook it back in. Uh, uh, eight seconds. Oh, I was going to say you need to put a anytime I imagine in, in the prolonged future, I'm going to have lots of different updates to tell. We should find a fun little jingle for oh, like Hell Diver updates. Like a little trumpet, I feel like. Like, brum, brum, yeah. Brum, brum, or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then like an uh, alien anyway. exploding. Yeah, dude. That okay. would be funny. I'll I'll see what I can do. Well, in the meantime, I told you that like we were wiping out the automatons, right? Yes. And I was like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? The automatons, once they're gone, they're gone. Well, we got rid of them, and for like a day, maybe, they were gone, and all we could fight were bugs, and the whole community was just kind of like, huh? Now what? You know? Yeah, it's like we did it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> yeah. like, uh, hey, but what ended up happening is that was so I logged in after a couple days and I I take a look at our giant war table, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Dude, yeah, there's like six sectors with the automatons in it. I'm like, what? what happened? What happened? You know? Yeah. Uh, what happened was that was the the people we were fighting was just a vanguard. Right. They were not even the entire force. It was I, I just... actually remember you did message me about this. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's that's actually crazy. That like the game actually like pulled a fast one on you guys and like sent a decoy squad that you've been fighting for how long? Like it was, it was a big deal. Uh, since the start of the game, so. So like this automaton uh, squad that was apparently just the decoy squad. I mean, and it obvious. Like, 
I don't know how big is the other squad. You know what I mean? Like, did they only need a few guys to sneak in and take over? Or are you talking about how big is the new one? Well, so it's like you. This is the decoy, right? And then you had another group take over while you were fighting the decoy, right? Is that my understanding? Uh, no. So yes, there was there was one force of uh automatons, and then there was a second force. That was in the shadows. And what's interesting is you could actually see them from the planet. I did see a couple of them. I saw right, just like looming okay. shadows, silhouettes of ships up in the atmosphere. I didn't know what they were. I was just assuming it was going to be an update later. Right. But this new force, according to Super Earth Intelligence, is 1,000 times the size of the Vanguard that we That's were fighting. crazy. So it's like not only was it a decoy, but it was like not even like 1%. <laughs> it was just a fraction of the actual force yeah that's crazy like does it feel because like i i like that from a storytelling standpoint but as a player does it feel hopeless when you learn that yes it yes <laughs> like it's like what's I, the point? i've been if we defeat the the uh, the rest of the thousand more of them thousand times more of them well, if we defeat that then they're just gonna be a thousand times more than that you know i don't know I feel like this is the automatons. It's kind of a lore thing, but I right. think the bots are going to be trying to get something else, no, it, some, it some other sense. faction from the original game. It makes sense but from like, a lore standpoint, but I just it just makes you wonder as a player, like, can we ever really win? You know, um, I think we can, but man, is it going to be much harder than I thought? So I'll right, tell you, right. I'll tell you this: as they've been invading, we got new orders to. Of course, to defend our planets, right? Yes. Um, that was three days ago. We're definitely not going to be able to do it. There's it. There's no way. The automatons are just spreading too fast. And, wait, wait. So and you're so, telling me that there's a meter that's filling, and when it fills, you're out of time. There is. Yep. And then it's filling too. And fast. these meters are filling up quick. <laughs> and it's kind of scary. Dude, I'm not sure. Scary. Dude, what if you had a meter over your head for like how much longer you had to live? Dude, that'd be crazy. Kind of nuts. Kind of scary. Yeah, because that's kind of what you're saying here is that like when that meter fills up, like they get the planet, like it's over. Oh, uh, they're not quite there yet, but they have to close it in. Yeah. It's so terrifying. My voice cracked. I would love to see, in a way, I would love to see like Super Earth be lost just to see what would happen. Because it's like, Part of me is I like, can't but, wait to fight on the Super Earth map. I really want to. I know me, that sounds bad and not no, very democratic of no, me. No, because well, like, it's it's that curiosity, right? Like you you just want to be there and you want to you want. I don't know. You know what I mean? And like that that whole Avengers vibe of like this battle has so much weight behind it. You know, like you just need to. I don't know. It it does. It definitely feels more epic to like be on Earth and defend it there. Um, even though it means that like they're that close, so it's like we really shouldn't get to that point. But it, it makes me wonder because you know you've we, you've got the Hell Divers team kind of behind the scenes running this whole game, and it just makes you wonder like what are the limitations? Like, would it ever be possible for the players to lose? Would it ever be possible for the aliens to lose? Or is it always just going to be like, oh, you got so close, but then they then here's this, you know? Like, I, I it just makes uh -huh. me wonder like. Are they going to actually abide by like specific rules and be like, oh, well, if you don't do it in this time, like you actually just straight up lose, you know, and like, like what would that yeah. even look like, dude? So th that is interesting to me, um, but I don't know if we'll ever see it. Well, that's that's the biggest meter I've been thinking about lately. Yeah. So. Yeah. All of you out there uh, at parking meters, I wish you luck. Those are the bad kind of meters. Centimeters, dude. Centimeters are cool. Those are disgusting. Oh, I like centimeters. <laughs> you ever been hit, <laughs> hit by a meter stick? Like a giant mm, can't say. made of wood. I used to swing them around like swords when I was a kid. I mean, I think we called oh, it. Oh, like a yardstick? Yard well, yeah, because we're, we're in, in America. I'm sure they're called meter sticks in places that use the metric system. Do we use the metric system? I, I, I don't know what the two systems we are do. called. I just know that we use one system 
and the rest of the world uses a different system and that people are there's the it. meter <laughs> system then there's everyone else well and then there's like like fahrenheit and celsius is that that's different isn't it it, yeah, it, it's the same concept. It's Guys, there's Fahrenheit and then there's everyone else. America's weird. Okay. Like we, we make it work, but like if you're not from America, feel free to comment below how weird it is that we're different. And how much how yeah. many meters we have. There's a lot of meters. We got Anyways, a lot of different meters from your meters. That's that's all I wanted to talk about this week. So thanks for joining us on the bench. We got a train to catch. Yep. So we'll see let's, you next uh, week. Let's, let's get that train. You got your tickets? Yeah. Wait, these are concert tickets. Dang. I shredded my tickets. Oh, no. I guess we're going to see Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang. Okay. <laughs> well, see you at Taylor Swift concert. Bye. Woo! Wait, who's Taylor Swift? Woo!